for today, we are gonna have another data logging video for you guys. We are gonna check how much our N75 valve is opening and how it is affecting our boost. So we did do a boost log in the past where I did explain everything about it. So basically this is gonna be everything you need to know about the N75 valve. Let's get inside the car and get this video started. Before we jump into all the juicy stuff of the data log, of what we're seeing, what we need to see and so forth, I first want to take some few minutes just to explain to you what this valve actually does. So this valve has got a bunch of names. A lot of people knows it as an N75 valve, as a boost controller, a pressure converter. It has got so many names out there. For this video, I'm going to try my ultimate best to call it a boost controller. So let's quickly run through it. In the middle of a boost controller, it has a solenoid and most of the boost controllers out there has got two pipes to three pipes. Sometimes you get them with more pipes, it depends on the application, but we're just going to keep this video simple. Alright, what is the function of a boost controller? So from your turbo, there is a small pipe going to your boost controller, obviously going into one of the pipes. As your turbo is building up boost, the pressure in this little pipe is increasing, which is touching the solenoid valve of the boost controller. Once your car has realized that, oh, I'm reaching where my boost is supposed to be, the solenoid will actually move a little bit down, let some of the air escape through to the second pipe. So that second pipe is usually connected to your wastegate. If you don't know what a wastegate is, that is basically a small flap on your turbo which allows boost to slip out of. And that's going to obviously allow your car not to over boost. So that is how a boost controller is controlling your boost. So in my case, the problem I'm experiencing with my car is that as soon as my boost kicks in, my N75 valve, sorry, my boost controller actually takes too darn long to respond and open the solenoid valve. This results in my boost over spiking where it is supposed to be and sometimes triggering limp mode. So I checked all my valves, I'm sorry, all my pipes, everything. I had my turbo reconditioned and I'm still having the same problem. So also to give you another idea of what I'm experiencing is that literally as soon as my boost is, starts to get stable, uh, as the RPMs goes up, my boost is actually dropping. And when I do actually data log my N75 valve, my boost controller in this case, I'm actually noticing that it is not staying shut or well, not closing at all when my boost is dropping because when it closes, my boost should be actually picking back up. And in this case, it is not. So we're going to data log this. I'm going to learn you guys how to data log it. And at the same time, I'm going to be data logging my car to see if I finally fixed the problem because just the previous video, I changed this valve. All right, let's get to the fun part now. For this, we are going to use VCDS to data log. So you're going to go to select control module and basically what you want to do at this moment is also make sure that your car's ignition is turned on. Your car doesn't have to start, just turn the ignition on. We're going to connect to the engine, just give it a few seconds to load up quick and then we're going to click on advanced measurement values. All right, so first thing you want to do is you want to go and click on engine speed. So this is not the speed of your vehicle going. This is the speed of your engine rotating, which is RPMs. After that, you want to go here in the search bar. You want to search charge. So under Audi, this is where you can see your turbo pressure, your supercharger pressure and all of that. And we're going to click on the one at the top. So this is your specified value, as you can see here, specified value. This actually tells you what your car is requesting. So when you put your foot flat to the floor and your car is requesting one bar, it will show you now I'm requesting one bar. And then we're going to have the charge air pressure, which is the actual valve. So right over here, you can see the actual valve, uh, valve the actual value so I keep on looking the camera miss <laughs> so yeah I turned my phone upside down so anyway um, so the actual value is the value of what your car is actually making so specified us for one bar your actual might be 0.8 bar which means you've got somewhere a little bit of a problem because you're losing 0.0 2 bar, 0.2 bar, there we go. So that is going to show us our actual value. And now for the boost controller, 
here we go this is our boost controller the charge air control spec value so this is going to tell us when it's i think it's 95 percent or 95 to 100 percent that means the valve is completely shut and then as soon as it starts opening it will work in percentages the lower it goes means the more it is opening which will obviously allow more air to pass through the boost controller to your wastegate which will initially open your wastegate all right so then what we're going to do is we're going to click on turbo we're going to click on group it just makes it so much easier just collects more data we're going to say uh log uh, i nearly forgot that part then we're going to say browser uh, we're just going to choose on our desktop and you can rename it whatever you want to i'm just going to rename it boost controller and obviously do note that i've already put in my new n75 valve my new boost controller so for me it's going to be very interesting to see if my problem has been resolved or not so now what we're going to do is we are going to go into an open road a road which is not busy there's no one there a very very safe road uh, and we're going to data log it on the road so what you're going to do is you're going to most probably do this in third gear you don't have to go extreme to like fourth gear and all of that third gear is more than enough you're gonna go into third gear keep your rpms low maybe around 1500 or wherever just as low as you can and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna click start right over here you're gonna click start and then you're gonna put your foot to the floor you're gonna run your rpms all the way to when your car shifts automatically or till the red line where you're gonna have to actually shift do not break your car, please. <laughs> Just get your RPMs all the way up. And then once you're done, you're going to click stop. And we're going to come back and check out the data log. Let me quickly go to the back roads. Let me just quickly close all the windows. All right, so we're going to quickly do our log. I'm just going to slow down a little bit more. I'm locked into third gear. I just hit start. Foot to the floor. All right. Everything feels good. Don't worry about that. That is just my, oh, my screen is shaking, goodness. That is just my speed alarm. I always like to keep an alarm on just to know that, oh, okay, I'm reaching the speeds that I shouldn't go beyond. So anyway, there we go. We're gonna quickly just slow down a little bit more and I click stop. So I actually went, I, for, I completely let go from my, what do you call it? I quickly put my car into like neutral, uh, not neutral, sorry. <laughs> I'm just, just so much, wow, my car pulled very good there. So anyway, what happened was I took my car out of manual, so it actually just started to shift uh, up. So we are gonna see that on the data log, but we're quickly gonna go home and check out how it went. We are back home and I think this might be good news. Well, I hope it's gonna be good news. Any penny spend on any car, you just want good news, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open datazap.me. This is on Google Chrome. So you, if you don't have an account, you're gonna quickly create an account. This is basically that data log format just to put it in a graph, which is kind of pretty cool. It's just easier to view and all of that stuff. Once you've got your account like I do, you're going to go to upload uh, upload log. Then we got this one over here, which just says it's the English one. So we're going to click on the English one. And then we're going to click here where it says browse. Obviously, we place it on our desktop and it's boost controller. All right, so it's going to quickly upload it. We're just going to say boost controller as well you can obviously go and put in a bunch of info of what you have done and that for the purpose of this video i'm just gonna quickly jump it for now all right this is the memento of truth so what we see over here this is our uh in what do you call it our pool in third gear what I'm, I'm, what I'm gonna do just to make it a bit shorter is this is just uh, we don't have to worry about this information we're just basically gonna worry about this information over here you just click and drag and then you select it all right so this is our engine speed we started pulling at about 1.5 and we let off at 6 9 27 so you can basically say about 7,000 RPMs. All right, so this is our specified value. So this is basically what our car is asking for, and this is what our car is doing. If I click on this one, it is basically gonna show if it worked or not. It didn't work. Damn it, 
damn it, damn it, it didn't work. As you guys can see here, it overboosted by, where is it, charge, it overboosted by 0.2 bar, it stayed above until underneath of a year, and then where, that is about 6,000 RPMs, and then it just drops down up until 7,000 RPMs. So here is the N75 valve, this is basically, basically saying what, it's, uh, what it did, we're just going to close that just to get a border properly. So 95%, 0.95.7 in this case is when it's completely closed. That is when there is not enough, well, it's kind of keeping the wastegate closed for your car to build up boost. Once it got over here, it dropped to 71%, which says that it started to open a little bit. So some of the air can escape through the wastegate. And then it was just up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And then as soon as we got here around 5,000 RPMs, you guys can just see it slowly dropped off until about 64.5%, which you see, that's the problem I'm having is that because my, my boost dropped here at the end, uh, it should have been like it was starting to close. It should have climbed instead of dropped. So to give you guys an idea, we're going to open this quick. So we can still just look at the square. So we were shut all the way up until 2100 RPMs. Our boost kicked in max at around 2700 RPMs. So it started to open. A little bit earlier which is normal you want your your uh, wastegate to open a bit earlier just to slow down that massive spike of boost coming in so it opened to about 70 something percent across and then it just stayed so that is when our boost like kind of like dropped off a bit it did keep on going in so for some reason you see here it's 76 percent it kept creeping up like it's closing, it's closing 80%, 78%. And then over here, it just keeps on, well, there, it's holding this boost there, but it's not at spec. You see, over here, instead of running like 82%, we were supposed to run like 75% or something for it to come back to that specified value. And then over here, it was supposed to start to increase again because as you can see, the boost is dropping off. The car is starting to suck in all that turbo air now. And the wastegate is just staying open, blowing all the air past instead of keeping that boost going. So here we can see what the boost controller is doing. And this is exactly where we were before. Damn it, man. The car felt very good. I mean, that point, that point, two bar extra boost really made me smile, but it's not right. This is extremely bad for your car. Uh, your car is not uh, accounting for that extra boost. And at that moment, it's got to just apply extra fuel, fuel correction and all of that stuff. And it can most likely result into engine knock because now you get more air, not enough fuel. Your car is running lean. Uh, even sometimes now your car is trying to give more fuel and everything happens within milliseconds. So now your car is trying to add more fuel because you're running lean. Now you can going to run hot and your, while well, your cylinder is going to run hot and all of that stuff. So yeah. N75 valve failed, something else is the problem, but basically in another perspective, this is how you check your N75 valve. So now you can see how it's bouncing up, how it's going down, trying to control the boost. My car just doesn't control the boost properly. Something else is probably wrong and I'm unsure what it is. But anyway, we're going to drop this video right over here. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I do hope that this is going to help you guys out a lot. Like just now, I told you guys like, obviously as your car is building boost over here, your wastegate should be shut. And 95.7 in this case is shut. As soon as it's just going to reach your, its max boost, it's going to have to come open earlier so some of the boost can go out so it just doesn't spike too far and it did it did but it's okay so anyway guys this is the the white line should be on the green line and then the boost controller should have controlled it perfectly but something is just not as it's supposed, like as it's supposed to be i've got to just go and sit down and find out what it might be anyway guys i'm going to drop this video right over here thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it i'll see all of you guys in my next video but for now peace out